This video shows the treatment of a tongue type fracture in minimal invasive technique. 64 years old, male, surgery was done one day after trauma. For a systematic approach, I categorized fractures into two systems, fall from hate and direct trauma or sprains. For the second group, we see different and various fracture patterns. For the first group, S. sexlopresti identified a central primary fracture line and usually an additional secondary fracture line, dividing the fractures into tongue type and depression type. These fracture patterns are the result of different force vectors and hind foot positions. While additional force may lead to more fracture lines, the fundamental types remain constant. For the tongue type fractures, I see three groups. The first group shows only one primary fracture line and typically an avulsion fracture on the medial tuber. It should not be mistaken for a duckbill fracture, showing different fracture characteristics. The second and more common group has a secondary fracture line through the tuberosity, always horizontal. With additional fragments, I call them tongue type C. Returning to our fracture, we observe a large tongue fragment only one fracture line and an avulsion fracture on the medial tuber. Additionally, there are many smaller plantar and central fragments less common in this type of fracture. Following my systematic, I would classify it as tongue type A. For this type of fractures, two reduction techniques are typically used, one with a clamp, the other performing the vest method. For the clamp, we need a stable plantar bone structure as a counterpart. In this case it is fragmented, so we think we prefer a vest procedure. The principle is to position, for example, a shank screw deep into the fragment from dorsal and then lift it. But as we simulate this procedure we saw a problem, the small central parts. With the CT slices I have problems to classify these parts exactly, so we did an individual 3D reconstruction and examination. You see the tongue type fragment, the blowout wall, some comminution planter. We remove the talus, examine again the big tongue type, the avulsion and the sustentaculum. And here we find the problem we are interested in. The medial wall below the sustentaculum was broken, tilted to lateral and the parts were lying between the tongue type fragment and the talus. Though there was a danger to pinch these parts between the talus and the calcaneus by performing the vestuous maneuver. Surgery was done using our standardized positioning, ensuring free access to the foot and easy capture of the standard X-ray fuse, lateral protein and axial. Our first target was to reduce the medial wall. We tried it using a step incision laterally and with a respiratory through the subtalar joint. For the reduction of the tongue type fragment, we positioned a shank screw into the tongue fragment and start lifting the fragment, controlling lateral and proteins view. Next step was positioning the guide wires for sustentaculum and static screws. Then we performed a 3D scan. As was to be feared, the result was not satisfying. The fragments of the medial wall were trapped intraarticular, despite the attempt to push them away. We loosen the reduction again to widen the joint space slightly and try to clean the intraarticular gap with a joystick. Then reduction of the main fragment, guide wires, control and lateral and axial view. We did a second 3D control, not happy, and next try, and a third 3D examination. We were not completely satisfied, but the small fragment was now at the very edge of the joint, and the main fragment was well reduced. We finished with screwing a sustentaculum screw, two big static screws, one tuber screw. If you look carefully, you can see the small fragment visible in the Broden's view. For after treatment, we use no cast, no special shoes, no rotosis. We start active and passive movement for all joints the day after surgery. Mobilization with crutches, begin weight bearing after 6 weeks. The clinical outcome was very satisfying, no problems with full load, good function, no pain. Stable bony healing and a good reduction. 
When analyzing the case, however, some points need to be discussed. The surgical result was not entirely satisfying because of the remaining fragment. I did not use a sinus tarsi approach because I was uncertain whether I could really judge and reduce the medial wall in this way. But in view of hindsight, it might have been useful. Of course, we can consider atroscopic support or additionally a medial approach. In these cases, the entire procedure has to be planned differently. To summarize, we were of course a little bit lucky. But we also achieved the key factors for a good result. A well-motivated patient, a good reduction in stable osteosynthesis, no additional surgical trauma and as a benefit, consequent immediate functional treatment. Thanks for watching.